Today in our 2016 Dodge Durango, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Airlift 1000 air helper springs for coil springs for the rear axle. Whenever we're hauling a heavy load with our Durango, whether it's a trailer or we have the back full of passengers, pets, and all sorts of gear, you'll notice that the back end is going to drop down. Well, that's putting a lot of strain and stress on our rear suspension, not to mention it's actually affecting the front, because when the back end goes down, it'll pull the front end up which is gonna misalign our headlights, cause some weird tire wear issues, and they're not contacting the road as well, which means our steering and braking is gonna be diminished as well. But that's where our airbags are gonna help out. They're gonna keep the back end where it should be, nice and level, which will put the front back where it should be, and resolve a lot of those issues of braking, steering, and our tire wear. So here's what our air helper springs look like once we have them installed. Now these are here to help support the rear suspension whenever we're loaded down with a trailer or a lot of gear in the back. The way we're going to make any of our adjustments to our airbag is through the manual inflation valve here. Now we have ours tied into one so it controls both the bags at the same time. Our kit is however going to come with two inflation valves so we can have them separate which will be good for those off center loads so we can put more in one bag and less in the other. The airbags themselves are going to give us up to a thousand pounds of load leveling support. Now keep in mind they're not going to increase the payload of our Durango, they're just there to help support that extra weight. Now each one of the bags is going to range from a working pressure of 5 psi all the way up to 35 psi and you do want to check them before you go on your trip. So now that we've seen what our airbags look like and gone over some of the features, let's show you how to get them installed. To begin your installation, you want to lift up the back end of your Durango. Now since we're using a drive-on style lift, we're going to be using a pole jack to lift it by the frame. If you're using a jack and jack stands, you just want to make sure you lift it by the frame and let the axle hang down freely. Now if we come to the rear axle right where our springs are, if we come to the bottom, we're going to have this rubber plug that's going to be in the center of our spring. We're going to cut a hole through that seal so we can get access to go through the bottom. So I'm just going to take a utility knife and I'm going to cut a slit in that rubber seal. Now it is a little bit difficult to get in there. So it may take a little bit of patience, but we just want to cut through that rubber. So we can get all the way through to the bottom. Now we have an X cut through the top of this one. We're going to go and repeat that on the other side as well. Now if we move to the bottom of the spring perch, we're going to have this plastic cover that's going to be in the bottom. We're going to need to take away the plastic so we can have access and go all the way through until we reach that rubber plug on top. Now we can use a knife or a saw or whatever we need to cut these plastic fins out. You can use a saw, a knife, or whatever you have available to cut these plastic fins out, but I'm going to be using a drill and a step bit so I can just cut all this out rather quickly. So this is what it should look like once you're done. We want all the fins out of the way and we should be able to reach from the top and poke through so we can get to the bottom. I'm going to repeat that on the other side as well. We're going to grab one of our air springs now. And you'll notice they're going to have a little plastic cap on them. I'm going to pull the cap off and we're going to compress our spring so we can get as much air out of it as possible. And once we have it compressed, we're going to come back with the cap, put it back on, and it'll hold the shape so that all that air is out of it. When you get ready to put it in, you want to make sure that that cap is on the bottom and we're going to feed it in between the coils on our coil spring. Now the easiest way is probably to bend it like this. And we're just going to squeeze it in between until we can get it to go all the way in and line up properly. Again, you want that cap to be on the bottom. So we'll start feeding our spring in until it starts feeding its way up to the top. You may need to use a blunt object. You don't want to use anything sharp, but something smooth and rounded so we can kind of push it to get it into position. Now once you have your spring in there, we'll remove the cap so the spring can expand to the position it wants to be in. 
We're going to repeat that for our other spring as well. So now we can get our airline tube ready. It's going to be one large section, so we'll find the center and then we'll cut it in half. Now when you're cutting it, you want to make sure you're using a tubing cutter. That way it makes a nice clean cut and we don't have to worry about any off angle cuts, which eventually will lead to leaks down the road. So we'll make sure you have a nice clean cut whenever you cut your airline. So our airline's gonna come from the bottom and feed up and push into the barb fitting that's at the bottom of the bag. However, before we put it in place, we wanna make sure that we have our little clamp in place. These are really small and it is a little bit difficult area to put on. So we're gonna slide our clamp onto our hose just about an inch or so down so it won't interfere with putting it on, but we still have access to it. And before we feed our hose up to that fitting, we want to make sure that we put in the supplied spacer that's going to go in between our airbag and the bottom of the spring perch. So we'll set our airline tube down for now. And we'll take our spacer, kind of have to lift up a little bit on the airbag. We're going to go underneath the airbag to where it sits right inside. And then you just want to double check that the fitting is still accessible and it's coming through the hole at the bottom. So now we'll take our airline. And I'm going to feed it up through the hole. And you're going to want to push it onto that barb fitting to where it's fully seated. And then we can move our clamp to where the clamp will go around that barb fitting and it'll keep the hose in place. So here's what the hose should look like. Now it is a very limited space, so it's probably easiest to use a pair of needle nose pliers once you have the hose in place to slide that clamp onto the barb fitting. But now that we have this one on, we're gonna repeat the same process on the other side. Now that we have both bags in place, we're gonna go ahead and lower the rear end back down so the suspension's not hanging, and we can start routing our airlines. Now whenever you are running your airlines, you want to make sure you stay away from any moving parts or any excessive heat that may damage the airline. So both our airlines, we had come out the bottom, we wrapped up going back up the lower control arm, we went over our rear axle, coming to the outside edge, and we routed them to the back here. Now you just want to be careful and be mindful of which line is which. So we have our passenger one over here and our driver one over here. Now we're going to be mounting our airline fittings to the back of the bumper in this area. Now if you want to have two separate ones, we do have the valves for them. And we'll just leave our two airlines separated and we'll use them to mount our inflation valves. But if you want to have one valve for both airbags, I'll show you how to put the T in so we can have one to control both of them. So we'll grab the T. And this is gonna allow the air to come in and go out to our two separate airbags. So what we wanna do is we wanna find a spot where we're gonna put our T. I'm gonna to come to this spot right here because it's gonna allow us to have both of our lines really close together. So make sure you use your tubing cutter again. We'll cut our line in half. We'll remove the excess for now. I'm gonna take my clamp, I'll slide it over the airline tube, just like we did for our airbag. And I'll take my T, I'll slide it over. I'm gonna get that all the way on there. And once we have it on, we'll slide our clamp over the end of it. And with the one airline in place going to our left airbag, I'll put the other one in place going to the right side. Now you may need to trim a little bit of the excess off, or you can put a loop in your airline so you can kind of tie up the excess and attach it that way. Either way, you just want to make sure that you put your clamp in place. Finally, we'll put that third piece in, and that's going to be that excess airline tube that we trimmed off. But go into the third one with the clamp, and we'll route it towards the back where we're going to mount our inflation valve. We decided to mount our inflation valve at the back of our bumper by the hitch, just towards the driver's side. 
Now you want to double check the mounting location that there's nothing behind there because we are going to have to drill a 5 16 hole in order to get our Schrader valve in place. So we're going to come to the bottom of our fascia here and we're just going to drill straight up. Now, if you did not use the T connector that was in the kit and you're using two separate valves, you're going to need to drill both of those out. We're going to start by taking our inflation valve and we'll take one of the hex nuts in our kit. I'm going to thread that on there. You want to go pretty much all the way or as far as you can getting it on. We'll thread it all the way up. Then we'll take a star washer and we'll slide it over the valve and we're going to slide the entire valve through the hole that we just drilled. Now if you drill an exact 5 16 it may be a little snug to get through, but it will fit. Once the valve is coming through, we're going to place a rubber washer over the valve. I'm going to push that as far up to where it's going to seal against the body. Then we'll grab a flat washer. We'll go over and then we'll secure it down with another hex nut. I'm going to come back with a half inch wrench and socket and I'm going to snug up my valve here. Now you don't need to go crazy tight, you just want it to be nice and snug to where it's not going to come loose. And that washer kind of compresses a little bit and gets a nice seal. So we'll take our airline, we'll slide one of our clamps over the end of it, and then just like all the other ones, we're going to take it, we're going to plug it directly into that barb fitting. With everything mounted up, I'm going to air up my airbags and I'm going to check for leaks. Now, whenever you do air it up, you want to go slow because they are going to air up rather quickly and we don't want to put too much air in them. Now, it's a good idea to double check your pressure. Now, we can see clearly if there's a big leak because it would start going down immediately. We'd probably hear it. But, Mainly we want to check our pressure because we don't want to go above 35 PSI, which is going to be the maximum for our bags. Now we're going to get some soapy water and check for our leaks. So you want to spray down all your connection points, including the inflation valve. And what we're looking for is for bubbles that are expanding. Obviously the soap is going to have some bubbles in itself, but we're looking for those expanding air bubbles that are blowing up and then popping. That's going to let us know we have a leak. So we're going to go around and spray all the connection points down. And with no leaks in our system, we're ready to hit the road. That'll finish up your look at the Airlift 1000 Air Helper Springs for coil springs on the rear axle on our 2016 Dodge Durango.